right, so I'm going to do a coding tutorial here of this program, application, uh, whatever you want to call it, of this um, virtual theremin. Uh, I called it a, a theremin emulator here. Um, digital theremin, computer theremin, virtual theremin, you could call it a number of things, but um, yeah, it's meant to mimic the behavior of a theremin. So I'm going to pull up a video of a theremin here, uh, just in case you haven't uh, seen it before or heard it before. So that's, this is the real thing. And this is Clara Rockmore. All right, so very beautiful instrument, right? Very um, ev evocative. So I'm gonna uh, try to see if I can recreate that with software. All right, so here's an overview of the whole program. Basically, I broke it up into two parts. There's one script which processes the webcam feed frame by frame, uh, trying to detect hands, and then moves the cursor based on the position of the hands. And then there's a different script which sonifies the hand position. That part is written in JavaScript, and the part that's searching for hands and moving the cursor is written in Python. And I'll be using P5 sound for the sound and MediaPipe for the hand detection. All right, so to start this off, I'll begin with a little sound test. So uh, let's say we just try to make a sound when you press the mouse. So here I got a folder called sound test that I'll do this in. I'm going to be using VS Code, and um, you're going to need a particular file called uh, p5.sound.js. So to get to this file, just search for p5 sound or sound p5. Go to this GitHub right here, processing slash, slash p5.js sound. And then in the readme here, in the documentation, click on this sound library here, p5.sound.js. So go ahead and copy all this code into a file in your project folder. All right, so I got my folder sound test open in VS Code. I'm going to first create that sound file. So paste the code from that GitHub uh, file into here. Now create an index.html, and I'll assume that you know everything that's supposed to go into an index.html file. All right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do here is create an oscillator object. So that's a P5 object. Um, where you just give it a sine wave or a cosine wave, it's going to sound the same if it's sine or cosine. But um, I'll just go ahead and start writing these out. So let oscillator, let there be, an, uh, let's call it osc, let there be an oscillator, and there's going to be a Boolean variable called playing that'll just be true or false, and you'll set it false when. Um, set it true when you press the mouse and then set it to false when you stop pressing the mouse. So the first function, um, so I'm using P5, I'm going to assume you know how P5 works on a setup function and draw function, kind of similar to uh, how Arduino works, a setup and then a, a function that continuously loops throughout. So I'm going to go osc equals P5 dot oscillator with a capital O and give it a sine wave. And then down here, draw function. So the way I'm going to design this is if the mouse is pressed, playing gets set equal to true. And that's when that's we know when we should be starting on the oscillator and um, doing all the, the things related to the sound pr uh, production. So if playing, so if playing is set to true, we want to start the oscillator. And then uh, set its frequency. Here I'll give it a frequency of 440. That's an A note. So here's the oscillator notation on the P5 website. So here are the parameters. Frequency, which I just gave it, and then uh, the next one is called ramp time, and it is optional. All right, and then the next you need is uh, the uh, you set the amp uh, the amplitude. So this is going to be where you set how long it takes to get to 100% volume, which is indicated here by one. If you make it a one, that means it's gonna go, uh, well, from zero up to one in, from zero up to one in the second parameter tells you how long it's gonna take to ramp up to that. 
and I'll set it to 0.5, so it'll take half a second to do that. So the sound's going to go like it's going to have a little bit of a, um, a, a slightly gradual um, uh, increase to full volume. All right, so here's where the mouse pressed events will occur. And uh, oh yeah, I got this. I should actually start the oscillator here. Yeah, yeah, because you only want to start it once. If you keep starting and stopping it over and over again, it'll uh, it'll start to sound it'll start to sound bad. All right, now set playing equal to true here, and then when you uh, release the mouse, mouse released, set playing equal to false again, and then oh yeah, stop the oscillator here too. I'll stop the oscillator when you release the mouse. And let's go ahead and see if this works. So all we need to do to make it produce a varied pitch that we can control is change the oscillator's frequency property from 440 to mouse X. That'll make it equal to the X position of the mouse. Also, another thing that would make it sound better is to add some decay time so it doesn't stop so abruptly. So we'll be doing the opposite of what we did up here. And you do that by adding a line oscillator.amp 0, 0,5. That means it will go from full volume 1 to silent 0 over half a second. All right, now let's try running it. So here's where we make the media pipe program that will detect the hand distance along the x-axis and then move uh, the cursor relative to the position of the hand. So you need a, a few libraries here. You need a library called OpenCV2, Open, or sorry, OpenCV Python, and then uh, when you import the library, you uh, import CV2. So I'm using PyCharm here. Go ahead and import CV2. Import another library called PyAutoGUI. So right now what I'm doing is I'm gonna make just the mouse, the cursor move um, based on the position of the index finger of the hand. So I'm gonna make it so it only sees one hand. You can set that, um, how many hands in the hands it's gonna look for. The next library you're gonna need is the hand tracking module of CVZone. So CVZone.hand tracking module. From that import hand detector. Let me move this over. All right, so uh, make sure that you install these libraries. And I'm gonna start by um, making two initializations, an initialization of the webcam capture object, and then I'm going to set that, uh, and then I'm going to initialize the detector object. So the initialization, um, the, the, the initialization of the capture object will go as follows. So I'm going to call it cap, the capture object itself. And this is going to be CV2 dot video capture, and um, however many webcams are on your computer, I'm assuming there's just one. You're going to give it an input of zero. That's going to be the zero webcam. If you had two webcams, there would be a zero a webcam and a one webcam. And then set the uh, this is the Im the dimensions of the input feed for the webcam. So I'm not going to go into the specifics of this. Um, you want to put three, and then a 1280 is a pretty good dimension. I'm using a Mac. Uh, I might want to experiment with that, but these are pretty good numbers, I think, for probably any old laptop and just in general. Cap dot set 720. So this is the X and the Y dimensions of the webcam feed. 
then initialize the detector object. The syntax is quite nifty here. You go detector equals hand detector. of detection. Here's where you set the, the confidence, the confidence of um, the hand that it sees. So if it's uh, here, I put 0.8, that's going to mean that it's, if it's 80% sure that it sees a hand, it's going to assume that it's a hand. You can put that higher or lower depending on the results that you get, you know, something you can experiment with. And then the max number of hands um, that I'm going to set it to look for is one. I'm only going to do this with one hand for the first example. And then return the detector object. Oh wait, oh, shit, I keep putting uh, semicolons. This is Python, you don't put semicolons. Sorry about that. Okay, so the next uh, function is the really important one. This is uh, the cursor, the move cursor function. This is going to be running a while loop that's going to be, so it's going to be continuously looking for um, the hand detector's input stream for hand uh, landmarks. This is going to take the capture object and the detector object as input or uh, as parameters. So make this while true. This is going to be a continuously running function. And here's the syntax for this success. So uh, upon successfully uh, getting webcam input sent to you. Make the image um, frame, this is a frame by frame reading of the input data from the webcam. Set that capture data, uh, set that to the captures read object. That's the what, it, what, the, what the capture stream is reading in from the webcam. And then uh, the hands is an array which takes in what the detectors find hands function is returning and that's being given a frame from the webcam feed uh, which I'm calling IMG right here setting IMG to the capture read feed uh, so this is like what I what I see this to be is a, like this is a boolean that tells you okay we have we're getting a connection we're getting the feed and then call it this if you have objects in your hands array, so if you see hands, if this exists, then tell PyAutoGUI to move the cursor to, um, here's the dimensions that I found out work pretty well, to move it relative to the position of the x-axis of your finger as you're moving it, right? So I found that 1380 minus, uh, I just experimented around with this. I think these numbers probably work well for probably any laptop or webcam. Uh, seven, six times hands. This is the zeroth hand that it sees. In other words, in this case, the only hand that it sees. This is the, you know, first, this is the zeroth index of the array of the hands array. Go to the lim list. So this is the syntax. The lim list uh, refers to the list of hand marks of landmarks of the hand, so there's one for each finger. I'll, sh I'll bring this up real quick. I'm going to do media pipe hand data landmarks. Move this over a bit. Uh, images. It's in. Oh, right, right here. All right, so this is what we're dealing with down here. Okay. The. Uh, so zero um, is like the base of the hand, it's right at the wrist, and I'm working with the index finger, that's uh, the, eighth, the eighth entry of the limb list, of the hand array. Limb list, um, we're gonna be looking at eight, so index eight, um, the zero, th the, so that, that's just an X and Y. The uh, index finger is the eighth, uh, entry of the limb list and we're looking for the X and Y so there's a 0 and a 1 uh, for the X and Y value for the coordinate of that particular landmark. Alright so limb list 8 0 I forgot my comma there so just to recap I found that 1 half is a good number for this just to recap this is the X value of the index finger uh, being mapped to the X value of the mouse 
and the y value of the index finger being mapped to the position of the mouse. So that's where we're going to move the cursor. All right, finally, I'll create the main function which runs these functions uh, in the correct order. So we're first going to take the return value of the initialize capture uh, function and call it cap. And then detector will be the return value of the initialize detector function. And then we'll spend the rest of the program's running time inside of the move cursor function, which takes the capture and detector objects as input parameters. All right, finally remember to call the main function. And uh, let's let it run it, see if it works. All right, so there's one thing I forgot up here. In the initialize capture function, uh, I got to return the capture object at the end of the function. And um, I made a couple typos here. So look at this line. Um, I misplaced this bracket. So Oh, and also in the webcam capture function, that second uh, cap.set line should have a 4 as its first parameter. That refers to the height of the webcam feed. All right, now I'm going to try running it. All right, now I'm running the JavaScript P5 sound program. All right, so it's doing pretty good. Oh, uh, a little messed up there, but yeah, it's doing pretty good at tracking. I might be able to smoothen this out with some linear interpolation. All right, so this is kind of the basic implementation of the idea of a theremin, the concept of a theremin. In the next video, I'll try to um, make this better with using pitch correction so you can kind of use this more musically or it's easier to use as an actual musical instrument. I'm also going to use web sockets so passing uh, the data between the two programs using web sockets instead of just moving the mouse cur the mouse uh, the, uh, position directly because if you do that you can use um, you can get polyphonic with it you can do stuff with both hands at the same time which I think is going to be great and uh, or do mapping like you mapping a melody to each finger perhaps um, but that idea, that part of the program will be arbitrary. You can have any l inputs sending this thing all, t uh, sending to the receiving function, the client function, the JavaScript function all at once, and have multiple inputs going on. That's going to be interesting. Uh, also, you don't have to use anything I did. This is just one way of doing this. There's definitely many ways to do this. I use JavaScript and Python. You can definitely do this all in Python or all in JavaScript. This is just kind of my personal preference, and I like the idea of using sockets. That's going to help later on. Sorry, I forgot to turn my light on there. Um, so I'm going to wrap up this by um, saying I'll put the GitHub in the description of this video, and uh, I'll see you next time, basically. Uh, yeah.